We've got eggs that walk, flans that stalk. So come by today, the chicken's in the flying microwave. We've got pizzas that roll, the pans are after your soul. So stop by the Panic Restaurant today. Now open on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, I can't sing, as you probably figured out, and I kind of suck at writing jingles, but this game deserves a lot more song and praise than it got. In 1992, Taito brought over this crazy restaurant filled with attacking appetizers and devilish dinners and served it up fresh on a Nintendo cartridge. Granted, not everyone was calling their waiter over and ordering Panic Restaurant. Given its release after the heyday of the NES, not a lot of people knew about the game. But hey, even when the order comes out late, you can still enjoy it. You play as Cookie, the mustache with a chef attached. The restaurant has been taken over by the less than glorious mustache Odove, and to get it back you must traverse different sections of your former property. You'll be smacking pizzas, chickens, apples, eggs, and all sorts of other culinary confections, and later take down a different boss at the end of each section. It's all very standard Nintendo fare, but the fun is very well done. It comes right out of the Nintendo without a pink center. Cookie the Stash Chef controls very well, jumping and swinging his pan when you press the button, but he is kind of slow, but what do you expect out of a big chef guy like him? Thankfully though, he can take a few hits before taking the receipt for his order up to that great checkout in the sky. Cookie can also pick up other kitchen utensils, like the plates or pogo fork as I like to call it, as power-ups as you traverse the restaurant. The levels are kind of short, and you can easily beat this game in a terribly short amount of time, but for the first few runs, Panic Restaurant provides a good challenge. Sometimes in a good way, and sometimes in a bad way. Enemy placement is a big thing. You'll be attacked sometimes out of the blue and forced to react quickly to dodge or to attack. It's expected in a game like this that you'll have to do things like that, but if you go even a few pixels too far, the enemies respawn you'll have to rinse and repeat. Another thing to be expected in games like this, I suppose. The worst crazed culinary attackers are the flying kebabs, but once you play the levels a few times, you start to memorize the foe placements, and it doesn't really become that much of a problem. While the environments like the inside of the freezer and the dining room are pretty cool, the bosses are by far the best part of Panic Restaurant. Popcorn pans, microwaves, evil Big Macs, what Panic Restaurant throws at you is a heaping helping of demonic dishware, angry appliances, and anything else that if you could fight it in a restaurant, you'll fight it in this game. It keeps that madhouse restaurant theme really well, and that's what I really like about Panic Restaurant. It's charming with its presentation and its music, very well themed, and has a really fun, well-made game mechanic that makes for a decent challenge and a great game to play over and over again. It's not the best game on the NES, but it's charming, it's cute, and it plays actually really well. Panic Restaurant. Food Network probably wouldn't give it that high of a rating, but I say it's worth making a reservation for.